Hey there, I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Welcome to TCM, where tonight we're continuing our month-long conversation about movies that made a genuine impact on the culture. And joining me, as he did last week, is screenwriter and producer Larry Karaszewski. Uh, Larry, thanks for being here. Thanks for, uh, thanks for having me. I'm excited to watch these movies tonight. Yeah, I enjoyed our conversation last week, so I'm looking forward to tonight uh, as well. Larry and his writing partner, Scott Alexander, have an impressive resume. Most recently, Dolomite Is My Name, the Eddie Murphy film. Such a great performance from him there. Two movies directed by Milos Forman, Man on the Moon and People vs. Larry Flint. I bring Forman up because he directed, you know, one of my five favorite movies of all time. I suspect uh, you enjoyed it as well, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. What was uh, Forman like? What made him... What made him stand out as a director, Larry? Uh, he was a, just a great director and a great person. I recently just did a, 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 it was a huge tribute to him in New York, and we watched almost all of his films uh, back to back to back. You know, he was looking for uh, what he would call unrepeatable moments, bits of real life that he could put into a film, things that were that made things feel real. And it's interesting, he brought up One Flew Over the Cougar's Nest, which is a perfect segue to the movie we're watching tonight, The Snake Pit. Both of them take place in mental institutions. That film seems so alive and so honest, and he taught us so much about film and art and life. We were very lucky people to have him direct two of our films. Larry just mentioned uh, the movie we have next from 1948, directed by Anatole Litvak, Olivia de Havilland starring in The Snake Pit, a 20th Century Fox film from 1948, another film that took on head-on a serious issue in the culture, mental illness and the conditions in mental institutions. And Zanuck produced one of the films that uh, we had last week, taking on anti-Semitism in Gentleman's Agreement. Again, to make the point we made last week, uh, Zanuck, uh, these these issue-oriented movies weren't clearly important to Zanuck. Yeah, no, he was a, he was a very brave producer. In fact, he won a, he won the uh, honorary Oscar for producing three times because he was such a strong producer and making movies that no one else dared to make that the Academy kept on giving him his award, and he deserved it every time he got it. The Snake Pit actually was informing a public of what was happening right here, right now. People didn't know about electroshock therapy and all these issues that were, were happening in there. It was actually a movie that was setting out to change society. And it actually did change society. I think 13 states wound up changing their laws about uh, uh, mental institutions because of this film. It was funny. I looked up this movie in preparation for these nights. And uh, it, um, you know, looking back at old newspapers, the first couple of weeks, it was always, I'd be reading articles that were on the entertainment pages slowly the articles tend to move over to the editorial pages and letters to the editor. And, you know, and so clearly people were seeing this film and feeling like something had to be done. And so that is what, uh, that is indeed what happened when the snake pit was released. Seldom is a movie more reliant on the performance of its star uh, than this one. Uh, I mean, if this, if Olivia de Havilland does not deliver here in the snake pit, then we are certainly not talking about this movie you know, 75 years later. Yeah, it's one of the extraordinary performances of all time. It, the movie is just completely on her from the very get-go. The way that movie opens with just her and you hear her voiceover and she doesn't know what's going on and she thinks is she in a prison. Almost right away, almost you feel like you're in a film noir. Yes, it's not a, it's not a mystery of a crime, but it's a mystery inside her head. She can't figure out what's going on with her. And apparently she said that... Uh, one of the big things that helped her in this role is when she went on those trips to meet with mental patients, she was expecting the stereotypical, you know, shifty eyes and the, and people acting, uh, you know, losing it. And she said, I didn't, she didn't find that. She found just real people, real, just human beings who were just like, you know, they, yes, they had wild highs and wild lows and they would go off the rails at times, but uh, they were just, they were, they were, this was, they were nice, good people. And she was determined to show that in her character, that she wasn't, uh, she wasn't a fool. She, what, this is not Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. This is about a real person. And that, that goes with all the other characters in that mental institution, that it isn't like, oh, I'm trapped in this place with all these crazy people. They're all human beings. So my favorite other character is Betsy Blair, that a lot of people remember from Marty. Olivia de Havilland's character in this movie is not just concerned about herself. She's concerned about all these women. And uh, and henceforth, the audience is concerned about all these women. And I think that's what makes it very special. All right, Larry, great stuff. Let's take a look at it now. We'll talk more after the film. Here it is. From 1948, directed by Anatole Litvak, Olivia de Havilland in The Snake Pit. 
Welcome back. Ben Mankiewicz joined once again by screenwriter and producer Larry Karaszewski. Larry, thanks for uh, being here. You know, thanks for having me. What a movie. What a movie. We just saw Olivia de Havilland's sterling Oscar-nominated performance as a mental patient uh, in The Snake Pit, directed by Anatole Litvak from Fox in 1948. Anything in particular, uh, some of those smaller roles that uh, that uh, stand out to you, Larry? Uh, yeah, I mean, Betsy Blair's extraordinary. And there's also that, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going to blank on the actress's name, but there's that moment where a woman gets up and sings a song called Going Home. And you look at all the women in this place and they clearly all want to be going home. And that's just an extraordinary moment as well. Yeah, that's a moving moment. That's an actress named Jan Clayton who did that. The actresses hired to play uh, some of those patients really so strong, even if it's just one little scene. And Celeste Holm, first of all, it's just not enough of her. You know, she didn't know how to deliver a performance that didn't feel authentic. I mean, that's a key thing in this movie. This, everything feels authentic. And for me, the, my, my favorite thing in this movie is the actual depiction of the snake pit, when, the, when she actually describes what the snake pit is, and you see that shot. That's basically a visualization of what she's talking about. That's so striking. After, even after all these years, your mouth drops open at what you're seeing. Yeah, I was curious about that shot. There's, I think, one edit in the middle of the shot, and I, I thought, you know, that shot today would... Would it be a real shot? Would it be CGI? I'm sure you can make it, would it look be CGI. great. It would be CGI. I still don't even know how they did it in this version, but it, it would probably be completely CGI. You know, not for the better either. Yeah. Frank Partos and uh, Millen Brand uh, wrote this screenplay based on Mary Jane Ward's novel. Uh, yeah. it, it's, uh, you know, it, as a screenplay, it, uh, it holds together well. Yeah, it does. And it's based on the uh, this novel that is actually based on Mary Jane Ward's actual experiences. She was actually uh, diagnosed as a schizophrenic and placed in a mental institution. The book was such a sensation that it, it's, what, it's what got this movie made, that people were reading about this book. Often in these message pictures, you almost need that book to be gigantic. Like Gentleman's Agreement was a gigantic book, and it gives Hollywood the courage to take on these issues because they've uh, there's already kind of you know in the air of uh, of um of you know people are talking about this issue so many uh, of our viewers uh, uh, know this already but this film is a is a really powerful reminder of the enormous impact that that movies had in the era before television i mean there could have been an expose in the in the new york times and the chicago tribune and the la times the washington post and Boston Globe and important papers all over the country. And it seems unlikely that it would have had the same impact as a single movie from 20th Century Fox about yeah. mental institutions and mental illness to get people yeah. to change their no, way of thinking. It seems like it's one of those, one of the rare movies that actually changed things for the better. It changed, I think, the laws in like 13 states. And so uh, when your movie has that kind of impact, it's really tells you about the power of the motion picture. Larry, great stuff. Thanks very much. Thank you. It was great watching that movie. Stick around. Larry and I have one more film to discuss tonight from 1955, written and directed by Richard Brooks, Glenn Ford, and Sidney Poitier in Blackboard Jungle. It's next on TCM.